Yo, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Momentum number 283. It's your first time on the channel. My name is Matt Beard. Today's video, we're breaking down how your lead should be followed up with, but more specifically, is how your virtual assistant should be following up with them for you. One of the biggest challenges and one of the most, I guess, the most asked questions that I get from uh, you guys and other people like in the masterminds, we start talking about lead flow in general. Like we can all agree that leads are lifeblood of our business, right? Yes, they definitely are. Now to that end, we got to be able to convert those leads into deals. Now, I would probably say venture to say anywhere from 85 to 90%. Now that's me shooting from the hip. I don't know uh, specifically what the number may be, but I can probably, t I can say confidently more oftentimes than not, our deals come from follow-up. You've heard people give you metrics. You heard people say the fortunes in the follow-up. The fact of the matter is it's true, but there's definitely a way to follow up with your leads so you can be the most efficient because I don't know about you guys, but I hate following up. I want to focus on the people that are ready to make a decision today, but it's important that it gets done. So let's structure this so you are not stuck in that perpetual follow-up game. You have team members that are helping you do that so you can focus your time when they're ready to make a decision. You're on the phone and you're going to be closing or you know someone will or you know someone who will be doing that for you. So without further ado, guys, again, first time on the channel, we talk about real estate investing. We talk about, you know, um, traditional REI wholesaling uh, subject to we've done deal breakdowns. We do all kinds of stuff here. I guess the thing about this content is I'm always keeping you on your toes. You don't ever know what you can expect on a day to day basis. And I really love doing these lives. So um, yeah, if you get any value from this stuff, please like this video. And if you do, as always, head over to the YouTube channel, hit subscribe. Okay, now let's rock and roll. I got my iPad out. I got my pen. Let's talk about this follow up and what it should look like so you can maximize your system. Okay, so let's turn the camera on. Boom. Now let's start with lead flow. So I'm gonna write this really big lead flow. Okay. So in a traditional world, um, you're going to have your lead generation coming in from the top of the funnel, right? And again, guys, think about this as a funnel, right? Leads flow in, right? So I'm just going to write leads come in no matter where they come from, right? It can come from, you know, for example, this could be PPC. This could be, you know, cold calling. This could be SMS, whatever that is. Leads come in from the top of the funnel and they flow down, right? And as leads, that looks terrible. But as the leads flow down this funnel here, just draw an arrow, as they flow down this funnel, they should be getting called by what we consider in our business lead managers, okay? Now, when a lead manager gives um, a lead a phone call, this typically happens, and I think you guys should note, within, so this is shorthand, within one hour, this phone call happens. Okay, no matter where they come from, we want to call them within the hour. PPC, like immediately, right? But it goes straight into our lead manager. So the cold calling from, from VAs or SMS from VAs or whoever's managing that, it goes direct. After we vetted that lead, we've got the four pillars. It goes into the lead manager, right? The lead manager's job, and I'll just write it here. What is their job? Is to further vet leads, okay? Now, where did this come from? Like, why was this important? I don't know if you guys ever experienced calling sellers or calling leads that you thought were leads, but by the time you call them, they're like, yeah, I never said I want to sell my house or I'm totally not interested. We can all, we can all relate to that, right? I never said I wanted to sell my house. What are you talking about? Right? So enough of that led me to being like, okay, I want someone to screen these leads, but like another layer of screening and right. And that's what the lead managers do. Typically in a lead manager job, we've talked about this a couple of times, but I think it's important and we touch it on this video. They're either going to get, you know, sellers who are ready to go, right? That's number one, ready to go, right? Number two outcome is it's going to be a follow-up, right? And number three outcome, it's dead. It's a dead lead. Okay. So if they're ready to go, where does that lead go, guys? It goes to acquisition. Okay, different set of people. That is myself. That is higher level salespeople who can get this deal under contract, who can negotiate and make it happen. So now what happens? This is how your lead should be followed up on because this is what I'm going to focus on in today's video is this guy, the follow up. So as leads come in through your pipe, they're going to figure this thing out. Now, what's the likelihood of, 
you know, from the time we got the lead to come in to the time our lead manager calls, what's the likelihood of something happening to that lead? Right. What's that something? What's the likelihood of them just not answering that follow up call? So let's address both situations here. OK, so and th there's a there. Here's how we do in this. I'm just going to pretend this is a flow chart. OK, so it comes in. Right. And I'm going to branch this thing off either number one over here or number two over here. Right. They either answer. Right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put they do not answer. And I'm going to put the answer. Okay. Now, both scenarios leads to two different things, right? So if they do not answer on that phone call, right, within our CRM, I tell our VAs, right, to mark the lead, right? So if they, if they call, again, guys, this is within the hour, within the hour, if they call here, right? The, the lead came in, the lead manager makes that phone call. They call within the hour and that lead does not answer. Our lead, our lead manager will mark the lead. Okay. They will mark the lead based on the notes. Okay. When, when what I mean by that is based on the notes, I want our I want our VAs to say, okay, what level of motivation is this? Do we get all four pillars? Again, four pillars are what? Condition, timeline, motivation, asking price, in no particular order. If they get all four things, I have our VAs mark the leads based on priority levels, right? And this is what that looks like, right? Priority level number one, and I'm just going to put prio number one. I'm going to put prio number two. And then over here, I'm going to do another arrow. And I'm just going to put prio number three. Okay. Now, if a lead comes in, hope you guys can read my handwriting here. But if a lead comes in, they do not answer. I have our lead managers mark that lead in our system as priority level number one, priority level number two, and priority number level number three. Right. So, priority level number one. These are our hottest leads, right? Hottest leads. These are the ones where if they come in and our notes say, you know, they're, they're definitely ready to sell. The motivation is, is there. And the asking price is like, oh my gosh, that's almost a deal, right? The laydowns. You look at those notes, you're like, holy crap, I need to get this person on the phone. Those are priority level number ones, right? Priority level number twos is just one degree a little bit cooler, right? Based on the notes. Maybe I'm missing, I'm going to put here, maybe missing, you know, one pillar. Maybe I don't have the timeline. Maybe I don't have the asking price. Maybe based on the notes, I can't really tell if this is something they're ready to do. They said their motivation is they're ready to downsize, right? Mm, is that that motivated? I don't know, right? So I'm going to probably put that as a priority level number three, probably priority level number two. And then priority level number three is, you know, I, I may be missing, you know, maybe two pillars or um, not a lot of, not a lot of uh, motivation, not motivated. And again, this is based solely on our VA's notes. And that's why, and that's why it's so important that our VA's take great notes because it tees up our lead managers, right? But a, a lot of times when we make this phone call, for whatever reason, we tell them, keep your lines open, they don't answer, okay? If they don't answer, we mark the lead based on the notes. Is it priority level number one? Is it priority level number two? Is it priority level number three? For each one of these, there is a separate power dialing campaign within our CRM that our, our sales team can hop in. They can hop in and say, you know what? First thing this morning, I'm calling all the priority level number ones. That means they're in our database. They're motivated, but we can't get them to answer the phone. I'm calling through those first. I need to get them to answer because if they do answer, it's a great chance I might be getting a deal today, right? So then it powered out all those in our system. And then, then after they work through priority level number ones, they'll go to priority level number twos, right? Whatever you want to call these, so I segment it into three different buckets, right? Think about these as buckets, three separate ones, priority level number one, priority level number two, priority level number three, however you want to segment that, that is exactly how we do it. Now, on the flip side, 
going back to our notes here, okay? Going back to our notes here, we're focusing on the follow-up. Number one, they're ready to go. Number two, follow-up. Number three, dead. So based on that, they answer, okay? Now, one, one outcome, they answer, is this lead is dead. Call, I never said I wanted to sell my property. Whoever told you that you had the wrong information, take me off your list, blah, 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 blah. We've all heard it. Okay. The next outcome is the follow up. I'm gonna write this one in blue. Actually, I'll keep it in black. Is follow up. Now, what in the world does that mean? Follow up means, hey, anything from, you know, I, I definitely want to sell my house. I'm definitely interested. Let's talk about numbers. We're ready to go. But my wife isn't with me. Right. But my wife isn't with me. So, you know, just let's go ahead and talk about it and I'll talk to her later. That's a follow up. I don't know who told you differently, but that's a follow up. If there's a decision maker not present, when you start talking, you know, doing higher level sales, or you trying to get doing negotiations, trying to get the contract signed and the spouse isn't there, it's not going to happen. You're not going to get the deal. Okay. So that's a follow up all the way to, yeah, you know, I was speaking with your, um, with your colleague, Rob, and I was telling him I was interested in selling the house and it's still the case, but honestly, there's just so much stuff. I'm not even in the state. I need an, I need at least three or four months before I can really make a decision. Got it. No worries. Right. We're not going to convince anyone to sell their property. We're just trying to figure out where they're at and we meet them wherever they're at. Right. I hope that makes sense. So based on that and based on the conversation, our leads for follow-up, right? And before I dive deeper into that, the third outcome, of course, we have already talked about it, is they're ready to go, right? And I'm just going to put here, they are ready. And if they're ready, there's a process, they go to acquisition. And I'll just kind of draw an arrow out. Okay. Acquisition. Now, under the follow-up tree, we've made the phone call. How in the world do we, how do we do, do we know to follow up with them depending on their timeline, right? And it's always a case by case basis. It's always a case by case. We don't put anyone in auto responders. They don't get automatic emails from us unless they're in like a specific long-term follow-up sequence with us. But what you'll find in your business is the best follow-ups are people who are ready to like people who like get physical phone calls and get real text messages that is specific to them. The tough part about it is yes, it's hard to scale that without having great people. You need great people in your business and heck that's why we're here, right? So our VAs are responsible for both sides of this, right? They're if they don't answer and if they do VAs are responsible for it. So if they do answer, we talk to them on the phone and for whatever reason, they're not ready to go today. I put them in a daily Okay, I put them in a weekly and I put them in a monthly. Depending on the conversation, I'll either need to follow up with them daily because such and such wasn't present, right? Let me erase that. Because such and such, like whoever the homeowner, maybe they're missing someone or, hey, you know what? Let's talk tomorrow. I'm in the middle of something. Great. I'm going to put them in my daily bucket. Okay. The, again, just like the priority levels are. These daily, weekly, and monthlies have their own bucket. So if our salespeople comes in, they're, they're going to call all the priority level number ones because these people haven't even answered yet. And then they can start calling all their daily follow-ups. It's, it's in a power dialing campaign. And I'm talking to the person like, hey, I know. Thanks for checking in. Honestly, follow up with me, you know, next week. Perfect. We'll put you in the weekly bucket. Or, you know what? Call me back in three months. I'm going to divide that timeline in half and I'm going to divide it in half again. What does that mean? If someone says, call me in three months right? I'm going to divide that in half. So that's going to be what a month and a half, right? So I'm going to draw an arrow 1.5 months and I'm going to divide that in half again. So I'm probably going to call this person in about three weeks. So when someone says a certain timeline, typically this is arbitrary, doesn't mean anything, but if they are like very specific about their timeline, I'm at least going to check in. I'm going to divide their timeline in half and I'm going to divide it in half again. That gives me three weeks. Okay. So <clears throat> hope that makes sense there on the, the monthly or the weekly stuff, but these stuff goes, they go into buckets. And again, I want you guys to think about these things as buckets. 
And whatever system you guys are using, sorry, that's a terrible just drawing of a bucket, but whatever system you guys are using, think about each one of these sections as buckets and your VAs are responsible for this. So guys, and, and this goes from, from all, all sets, right? So if we, if we call a seller, they answer the phone and they're like, Hey, nope, we're not ready to go right now. Call us back in a week, right? We'll put it in the weekly bucket, right? And then the major thing here, I want you guys to know, regardless of whatever bucket they put it in, they will also set a personal task to follow up, okay? This is like them setting an appointment for themselves. I'm going to put that in parentheses. This is an appointment for themselves. Hope you guys can read this, okay? So regardless of whatever bucket they put in, they will put it in the, you know, the corresponding bucket, and then they'll set their own personal follow-up tasks. Like with whatever CRM you guys are using, Podio, you know, FreedomSoft, you know, all these, uh, you know, left main REI, whatever CRM you guys are using, you can set a task for yourself or some sort of event for your salesperson where they're basically setting an appointment for themselves, right? So regardless of wherever they go here, answer or don't answer, if they follow up, they'll put them in a daily, weekly, or monthly, and then they'll set a task. Now, what happens when it pushes the acquisition? Maybe it goes to me, right? It goes to me on acquisitions, and I make that phone call. And lo and behold, they don't answer, right? Lo and behold, it goes to acquisition. They don't answer. What happens, right? Right? That they're they're ready to go. We had that phone call. They stopped answering. What in the world, right? Well, if it, if that happens, and if any point in time, you know, I can't get a hold of this person, or I know that I need to follow up with this person over a long period of time. Guess what I do? So, at whatever reason, our our lead manager called this person. They said they're ready. Now they go to me and they say, Matt, you know, I look. I did talk to Mara, and Mara said. You know, I was really interested and I, I still am, but I just need a little bit more time here. Um, can you give me, can you give me like a couple more weeks? And I, I want you to like, I'm definitely interested in working with you guys, whatever, right? If like whatever is going on, I know they're not ready, regardless of whatever I say or do, they're not ready to sign a piece of paper with me today. So saying that they are going to sell their house to me, I am not going to push them. I'm going to push them back through, right? I am going to recycle that lead. Back over here. So if it was ready, and by the time I called, and they're like, you know what, I actually, you know, we're not completely ready, but I, you know, I just need some more time, or, you know, like definitely let, let's work together on something, but give me like whatever that may be. Going back to the daily, weekly, monthly, I'm totally cool with it because guess what? I don't, I'm not the daddy for every single file. If they're not ready to sign something and they're not ready for an acquisition, they're not ready to be closed, I'm giving that back to my team. I'm giving that back to my VAs so they can follow up and say, okay, great, Mr. Seller, no worries. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to have Mira check back in with you in about a week and, you know, we'll just go from there. And if she, if she says, you know, if you talk to Mira and things change and you're ready to, to make a decision or you're, you know, obviously we love to earn your business, um, Mira just pass it back on and then we'll go from there, right? So I'll let Mira do the follow-up or whoever was that lead manager, I'll let them do the follow-up. And then when they're ready to go again, they're like, yeah, let me talk to Matt again. Perfect. They'll push it to me but I want that off my calendar. Okay. I want that off my calendar. The follow-ups, I don't want those there. I want to talk to people every single day that are ready to go. I want it off my calendar. So any kind of follow-ups, boom, going back to the VAs. If I make this phone call and they don't answer, which I mean, which means I call them two or three times and they still don't answer. Boom. Perfect. I'm pushing it back over. Okay. I'm pushing it back over here. And I'm going to let the team take care of it. Put it back in priority level one, two, three. Call them, call them, call them, call them. Got them back on the phone. Perfect. They're ready to go. Push it back to me. Okay. Once they answer, they're ready. Put, cool. Set you back up with Matt. Okay. They answered again. I'm following up. Awesome. You're ready to go now. Perfect. I'm going to push it back over to Matt or whoever the salesperson was. But this is how your VA works in your system. They simply just work in buckets and they segment it based on did they answer or did they not answer, right? And you could do this for any lead generation. Doesn't matter if it's PPC, cold calling, SMS. Now, one thing, caveat with PPC, 
is typically it goes directly to a lead manager anyways, right? PPC isn't called on by our cold callers. They're not like our, our cold calling team or SMS is not calling those people first. It goes straight to lead manager. Now, again, our lead manager has to find out their only job is to find out ready to go follow up or dead. They can't do their job if they, if the lead doesn't answer, right? So their job is to keep calling them based on priority level. They're going to get called either way, but we segment them in the buckets. And then when they do answer, is it dead? Is it follow up? Or are they ready? Right? So guys, that is how your VA should be helping you in your business. Because look, you're leaving deals on the table. 1000%. Like no doubt you're leaving deals on the table. If you're not organized on your follow-up, if you don't have someone helping you, I guarantee you have deals falling through the cracks. You know what one of the worst feelings in the world is? You know what one of the worst feelings in the world is, is to call a lead back that you kind of forgot about and they sold the house to someone else, right? If they sold the house to someone else. So do not let that happen. Mark says, Matt, sounds like your v, your specific VAs are very experienced. Just started one VA for Start Virtual two weeks ago. My VA sounds very interesting. Yeah, Mark, love it. Great question, man. So what we did with our VAs is um, just continual training. So my lead managers are not my cold callers. So the cold callers are literally just like monkey see, monkey do. Get on the phone, find, find motivation, find leads that are ready to go, find people that have raised their hand and they want to sell. Okay. So if my internet connection cuts out, hopefully the audio is still here, but just find people that are ready to sell. And then over time, my lead managers that I have are VAs. I've probably spent over a year with them, right? By the time I felt good about them doing lead managing, it's probably about four months, but that is the process. It takes some time to, to upskill your people. So hopefully you are watching like zero to hero and see how I manage that with the team. But it can certainly be done, and it certainly should be done, uh, but there's a process of getting them to that level, okay? So um, with your cold callers, you're probably wearing the lead manager hat and the acquisition hat. So maybe this helps you organize your follow-ups a little bit better, but I promise you, getting them to the point where they can manage your leads is going to make your system way more efficient, way, way, way more efficient. And we're working on um, an academy at Star Virtual as well as uh, lead manager-specific training. We're on wave number two. So some of our clients are already getting lead managers at Star Virtual, which is super cool. Uh, but something that we definitely see the industry needs um, based on like even the cool thing about having business in real estate investing and being able to teach and coach other businesses in real estate investing, other business owners, is that we get to show you guys like, hey, this is what we found that works. And we see a need for lead managers because so many people let leads fall through the cracks because we were in the same position. So guys, hopefully, hopefully, you got value from this video today. I know it was a lot of information. We almost went for 24 minutes. Typically, these videos are what? 10 minutes, 11 minutes. But I felt like it was necessary. I felt like it was necessary to go through this. Getting leads come in to your lead manager, segmenting on answering or not answering. Putting them in the correct buckets based on where they're at in the process until they're ready to sell their stinking house. And that is exactly how you do it, guys. That simple. Keep it simple. Simple scales, fancy fails, right? So guys, hopefully you got value from this video today. If you did, please, as always, like this video. And if you haven't already, head over to the YouTube channel, hit subscribe. It helps more than you know. I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me on a Thursday. Tomorrow's my birthday. I'm turning 30. My gosh, crazy times, crazy times. But guys, I this past year has been insane being able to just do these YouTube videos for you guys and, and do a ton of fun, like all these things, like I super, I really, really, really enjoy. So I don't take your attention for granted. I don't take you guys for granted. Uh, it's been an amazing year and you know, cheers to more. So guys, I hope you have a wonderful night and we'll see you again tomorrow. Peace.